dotted line. Let's the Philadelphia freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Kids. We shall have to retreat to keep our army intact. But General, Philadelphia. We'll be lost, I'm afraid. Once news we've occupied Philadelphia reaches France, the French will turn their backs on the rebels for good. Much too vain to fight for a lost cause. Make way for a hero! His bravery won the day! Which eventually led to Gentleman Johnny Burgoyne's surrender at Saratoga. That was a sight to see. Secretary for the Massachusetts Board of War. I have urgent news from America. Tell me, Mr. Austin, are the rumors true? Do the British occupy Philadelphia? I'm afraid so. Congress has fled to York. Wait, there's even greater news. The British General Burgoyne has surrendered his army at Saratoga. Come in, Mr. Austin. Christmas has come early this year. <laughs> Dearest Mother, so much has happened since I last wrote. Winter has arrived, and Philadelphia remains occupied by General Howe and his army. James took Dr. Franklin's printing press to York before General Howe's soldiers could confiscate it. The Continental Congress will, no doubt, make good use of it. As for Dr. Franklin's house, Captain John Andre has seized it and made himself quite at home. He dines often with Peggy Shippen, the daughter of a local gentleman with sympathies for the Crown. The less I say about her, the better. Every night there is a ball, or will I have gone to one or two to be polite? Under the circumstances, it is impossible to enjoy them. Everyone acts as if we were living in London. Ah! But the Americans always do something to remind us that we are in their country, in the midst of a war. Moses and James are now in Newport, in the colony of Rhode Island, to buy inks and papers for the press. There. From a merchant who I believe Moses said is Jewish. Little Henri is still here, however, and Captain Andre has delighted in giving him quite a bit of responsibility around the house. But here is my greatest secret. I don't like living with all these strangers, even if they are British. If only you were here, I'm sure I wouldn't be so confused. Your loving daughter, Sarah. Yes, Ben, you were wise to move out of Paris to this chateau. It's closer to Versailles and far more private than my quarters at the hotel. Not to mention more inconvenient for the French and British spies. Dr. Franklin, Mr. Dean, I don't mean to interrupt, but I've just learned some very important news. 
Paul Wentworth, the chief of Britain's Secret Service, has arrived in Paris. What in heaven would Wentworth be doing there? He wants to meet with Dr. Franklin. Burgoyne's defeat has obviously rocked the British government. Perhaps you should meet with him, Ben. No, I want you to meet with him first. Hear him out, but commit to nothing. In the meantime, I will pay a private visit to France's foreign minister. We'll play the British off the French so we can get what we want. And what exactly is that, Dr. Franklin? Check to your king. flushed out a couple of English spies. Now we must seize the opportunity to meet with Comte de Bergen. The ship sails for America in four days. Have these delivered by messenger. You can count on me, Doctor. Good luck. be the place. Would it be all right for me to look around? I want to check on the Rhode Island Brigade and see how they're doing against the British. I suppose. There's no point in buying inks and papers if we don't have something to print. I'll check at the State House and come right back here. That telescope's imported from Italy. Can I help you find something in particular, sir? I wrote you from Philadelphia about inks and paper. Ah, yes. Dr. Franklin's man, Moses. You've got a good memory. Well, you and I do share the name of the man who led my people out of slavery in Egypt, Moses Michael Hayes, at your service. If you don't mind me saying, I haven't met many Israelites. Neither have I, for that matter. We are but a small fraction of the American population. But I take it, Moses, that you are a free man. Yes, sir. Many less fortunate than you have been bought and sold on the docks here in Newport. Some, I have to admit, by my own people. And some in Africa by mine as well. But forgive my manners. May I offer you something to eat or drink? I, I wouldn't want to impose. It won't be fancy, I assure you. I lost everything I own when a ship I purchased went down in a gale. In fact, I've only recently come out of debtor's jail. A lonely place, I can assure you. But I don't have to tell you what it feels like to not be free. Makes a man value every day he is free. Please. Thank you. It's a funny thing about freedom. A lot of people talk about it without really understanding it. That's a fact. I moved here because Rhode Island guaranteed freedom of religion. Well, my people here do have our own temple of worship, but we're still not considered full-fledged citizens. Still, I'd rather be a free man in the United States than a servant to the Pharaoh of England. I mean the king. Moses! Yes? yes? He works with me at the newspaper. I see. I found out about the Rhode Island Brigade, all right. They sent a list of people they suspect of being Tories to the Rhode Island Assembly. Now, the Assembly has posted a list of suspects that it's demanding take a loyalty test by signing an oath in public. Mr. Hayes, I'm afraid your name is on this list. <gasps> All of France is impressed with the recent American victories, Dr. Franklin. As I've told you before, the United States will win this war. With France at our side, it will take a matter of months, not years. That one looks quite tasty. Of course, that looks good, too. Please, Dr. Franklin, take them both. I hate to ask too much of you. France insists. Merci beaucoup. Unfortunately, Doctor, His Majesty King Louis does not wish to offend his brother-in-law, King Charles of Spain, by signing a treaty of alliance with the United States. I thought this was between France and the United States. 
Spain owns a vast amount of land in America. King Charles feels that if you have taken what is England's, then you most certainly will take what is his. And France cannot make any agreement without King Charles' approval. I've been a patient man, and I don't mean to be rude, but given the circumstances... At least stay and finish your pastries. I'm sorry, but suddenly I feel in the mood for some English tea. Au revoir. Now that the American capital has been taken, the rebels will see the error of their ways. No less than Lord North himself assures me that Parliament will soon publish new terms of settlement for the colonies. I trust it will break their will as well as their backs. Now, John, they are of British descent after all. No, I believe the terms will be quite generous as long as the Americans are willing to give up their stubborn notion of independence. What are you doing here? Spying on them! Get back in the kitchen before you get caught. Of this, I'm certain. Once news we've occupied Philadelphia reaches France, the French will turn their backs on the rebels for good. They're much too vain to fight for a lost cause. Besides which, everyone knows they despise the notion of liberty. Yeah! The French will help! King Louis may not believe in egalité, fraternité, et liberté. The French people do. Liberty. <laughs> 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 Speak, General Howe. By all means, Miss Phillips. From what I've seen, too much has changed for the Americans to accept anything less than full independence. Oh, that is such a foolish little idea. No, it's not. You may occupy their homes, but you will never win their hearts and minds. Have you forgotten that you are English? It has nothing to do with me, Captain. The Americans don't feel they need a king anymore. They believe they can rule themselves. Rule themselves? <laughs> I, for one, would like to propose a toast. God bless King George. God bless King George! God bless King George. Michael Hayes? Yes? What can I do for you? Moses Hayes, you have been summoned to the State House. Take him away! We don't need the likes of you. I still don't believe it. The nerve, the gall, the absolute cheek of the British. You asked me to listen to Mr. Wentworth, and I did. But to insult you and me by offering us money and titles in exchange for becoming turncoats? No doubt Count de Vergennes already has heard the details from his spies. This is all going extremely well. Going well? I don't understand. We have fanned the flames between Britain and France. Now it's time for me to meet with Mr. Wentworth. But surely you don't intend to accept his offer? Hardly, but Count de Vergennes won't know that. There they are! Rotten Tories! Look at it! Traitors! I have here a list of men accused of being disloyal to the patriotic cause of American independence. Read the names! Get the traitors out! Wait out! As a representative of the Rhode Island Assembly, I am here today to demand that each and every one of the accused sign a public oath of loyalty to the revolution. Moses Michael Hayes, step forward. 
Mr. Hayes, are you ready to sign the oath? I have the right to face my accusers. Who here has any proof of my disloyalty? Or is it that there is some other reason I am accused? Could it be that I am an Israelite? Will you sign the oath or not? Every time I venture to Paris, I am reminded of how much I despise it. Quite a beastly place, don't you agree, Dr. Franklin? Actually, I've grown quite fond of it. I understand you are quite the celebrity here. Yet your blood is English. A man of your character, given the proper circumstances, might find a warm reception from his king and country. In other words, you'll give me a title if I betray the revolution. If you insist on being blunt very well. Yes, His Majesty is prepared to reward those who show their loyalty. I need not remind you that much has changed since you came to France. General Howe has taken Philadelphia. I like to think that Philadelphia has taken Howe. This letter was given to me by a man at the highest level of the British government. It is Britain's determination to fight for another 10 years rather than grant American independence. In that case, America is ready to fight 50 years to win it, which, by the way, I don't believe will be necessary. Gentlemen, I've called you here tonight because it has come to my attention that Dr. Franklin met today with the Chief of Britain's Secret Service. I'm afraid we are facing a dangerous new development. France has already lost America to Britain. Do we stand by and lose our claim to the West Indies as well? His Majesty has told me that we must prevent this from happening at all costs. We have held off any alliance with the United States to prevent a war with Britain, but we must face the fact that the only thing worse than such a war would be an agreement between Britain and America. It is time for this council to act. With all due respect, I will not sign. I will not sign because I am as patriotic as any man in this room. But I am also an Israelite in the land of Christians, and as such, I have not been granted the liberty to vote. My people have a temple here in Newport, but none in Boston, for the law there forbids Jews from public worship. Rhode Island was founded on religious tolerance, yet I am still not considered a citizen. And why? Because I worship God after my own fashion. Neither the Continental Congress, nor the General Assembly of this state, nor the legislatures of any of the other colonies have ever taken notice or provided rights to Israelites. Until such a time as we are, all of us, ready to recognize each other as equals, I will not sign this oath. <laughs> Dr. Franklin's plan was masterfully executed. Comte de Vergennes has signed a treaty of alliance with the United States. King Louis has finally agreed to grant Dr. Franklin an audience. It will mean war between Britain and France. You've given us every single letter Dr. Franklin has written to Congress. Why not just intercept the treaty as well? Even I can't do that. You think Franklin suspects you're a spy? The old man has no idea. It's a secret I shall take to my grave. I believe you will. Here you go, Edmund. 500 pounds as promised. God save King George. Mr. Hayes, it's Moses. Moses, I'm sorry. You came here to buy those inks and the paper, and we never did get around to it. There's no need to apologize. I saw what you did, what you said. I just want to be treated the same as any other man. Mr. Hayes, there are some people outside who want to see you. What can I do for you? Mr. Hayes, you made a great deal of sense. If all men are created equal, it only seems fair that each and every one of us should sign the oath. You would really do this? Permit me to be the first. I 
I, Moses Michael Hayes, pledge my loyalty to the United States of America. Moses, do you really think all men are created equal? An idea is only as strong as the people who stand up for it. And a lot more people are going to have to stand up for equality before it comes true. and Richard Henry Lee is about to speak. Gentlemen of Congress, today we must admire the true wisdom and dignity of the court of France. We have worked together, politicians, soldiers, and philosophers, in a true harmony of mutual affection. This happy juncture of time and circumstance has laid the seeds of an eternal friendship. The old lion that is Britain has finally lost its growl, and France, by its openness, has won our friendship more powerfully than any piece of paper could ever bind us. If we have the courage to persevere, we shall establish our liberties and independence. All those in favor of ratifying the treaty, say aye. Aye! The Treaty of Alliance with France is unanimously passed. Aye! Yeah! <laughs>